Welcome to Face the Nation. I'm Bob Schieffer in New York for an interview with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. In Israel today, there is a new round of criticism aimed at the Bush administration for putting too much pressure on Israel to attend the next round of the Middle East peace talks in Washington. Shamir himself was noncommittal about the talks when he met with the president Friday, but all this week he gave Jewish audiences in this country a sense of his feeling about trading land for peace. How often do we have to retreat from areas taken in wars of survival? How long can we trust promises, agreements, and guarantees which Arab hostility renders valueless? Shamir was under new pressure on the land for peace issue as a poll of the Council of Jewish Federations found most of their leaders disagree with him. The Prime Minister worked hard to convince that group of the danger for Israel. We live in an unstable, undemocratic, militaristic region where force is king, terrorism is endemic, and hatred of Israel universal. Do you consider the loan guarantees an appropriate topic for discussion at this uh, meeting? I've just told you that uh, we're not going to discuss what we might discuss. $10 billion in U.S. loan guarantees remain in doubt as Israeli settlement continues in the occupied territories. President Bush clearly hopes those guarantees, if they cannot halt settlements, will be enough to lure Israel to the peace table in Washington. Are you coming to Washington? We will continue to discuss it. What is Israel willing to negotiate? That is the subject of our interview with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. And Jim Hoagland of the Washington Post and I will talk about the Middle East China and the Soviet Union, with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Peace or posturing in the Middle East, an issue facing the nation. From CBS News, Face the Nation, with CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Bob Schieffer. Shortly before he returned to Israel last night, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir joined us here in New York along with Jim Hoagland of the Washington Post for an extended conversation. And since Syria now seems to be balking at attending the next round of the Mideast peace talks, and since Mr. Shamir told the president he wanted more time before deciding whether Israel would attend, our first question was, have the peace talks already collapsed? And not yet. <laughs> we are at the beginning. You know, and every beginning of such a process is difficult and complicated. And I told the president is yes, not to be surprised, but because it's normal. The peace process in our area is going uh, to solve a conflict that is uh, very complicated. Uh, he's of a long date and there are involved uh, many emotions. So it couldn't be easy. And we have to have patience and perseverance. But you don't have anything against Washington as a conference no, site, do you? No, it's not a question of principle. We think that if we left, for instance, in Washington, then first of all, it's far away. From a logistical point of view, it but will be for us a difficult. We, we have telephones in the United oh, States, Prime telephone. Minister. I mean, you know, yeah. if you have some experience in negotiations of this kind, you know, the telephone is not the only instrument and the most desirable instrument in such communications. And everybody understands uh, what we have to do in such cases. And then. Uh, we have to see the negotiators. We have to talk with them. We have to understand their feelings, their assessment about the mood of the other parties. And we will have to give instructions. And after all, the subject here is not a very simple one. It Prime. concerns our most vital uh, interests. It concerns also in some ways the housing loan guarantees that the United States uh, has not agreed to discuss until January. Will your ability to uh, accept and to welcome a large number of uh, new Soviet uh, immigrants in 1992 be seriously affected if you do not receive these housing loan guarantees? Well, uh, you know, some difficulties in the absorption of the new immigrants could have an impact 
on the number of the new immigrants unless uh, they will be forced to leave Soviet Russia because of the uh, impossible conditions they will have there. But uh, anyhow, we will have great numbers and we need help from outside. Anybody will understand it, that a country like ours, even if a much bigger country, a much richer country, will not afford to absorb such numbers of people in such a short period. And we need, for the meantime, we need some help. And what we are asking for is not, uh, is not money, not uh, loans, only guarantees, guarantees. Did you ask the president about this question when you met him on Friday? Not on this occasion, because we have spent all the time of our meeting on this problem of the venue, of the continuation of the peace process. And I regret we didn't have enough time to discuss many other questions we have on our agenda. I hope we will have another opportunity. Well, well, I suppose in some ways that's what sort of bothers uh, many Americans, and that is while you spend all this time haggling over where to meet, uh, the peace process doesn't move forward. And, and, and I'd like to ask you, uh, Prime Minister, what exactly is up for negotiation in these talks? What is Israel willing to negotiate about? Is it willing to negotiate, negotiate about giving up land in exchange for peace? You know, everybody knows we have here a deep conflict. There is a conflict between Israel and the Arab world. As a result of this conflict, we have had many wars. In the four, during the 40 years of the existence of our state, we have had uh, uh, more than four wars and many terrorist uh, attacks. And in order to get peace, we need negotiations. We have to negotiate. Flat out, do you ever see a time when Israel could give up any land uh, that it now holds as a concession you know, for you, something or the other? When you're, when you're talking about lands that Israel has to give up, uh, you know, people could uh, think that we are a continent, that we are a very big country with vast lands. Mm -hmm. very, we are a very small land. We have a very tiny territory. You have to take it in consideration. And to give up land of such a small territory and we are talking about lands that, in our opinion, in our belief, in our conviction, they belong to us. We have our opinions. We have our positions. The Arabs have their positions. Then we have to talk about it. There is no other way. Mr. Prime Minister, during your trip here, you spoke to the Conference of Jewish Federations, an umbrella organization of Jewish charities. Yeah. A poll taken of the leaders of Jewish charities just before you spoke showed that 80% of those responding in the poll favored a freeze on new settlements in return for, loan, for the loan guarantees for the Soviet uh, immigration. Are you prepared to consider such an idea? And well, are you surprised that American Jews are overwhelmingly, according to this poll, I am not against surprised. your policies on settlements? I don't believe it. I am not surprised, but I don't believe it, you know. I have met with these uh, thousands of people, not only in Baltimore. I had many mass meetings in Los Angeles, in uh, Boston. And everywhere I got an enthusiastic reception. And whatever I said about these questions, it was received with great enthusiasm. So you believe? By all, by all. So you, you believe? Know, I don't know where, uh, from where they're coming these polls and who made these polls. Well, this poll was made and, by the Wildstein know, Institute of Los Angeles. Yes, and it's about leaders. Who are the leaders? I am sure 100% that the rank and file of the Jewish population, the Jewish community in the United States support supports 
my views, my opinions. Would you be prepared to consider uh, suspending the settlements in return for the loan guarantee? Well, you know, first of all, we have to analyze what is the meaning of these settlements? What are these settlements? You know, settlements are a part of the territorial problem, which is a, one of the pillars of our conflict with the Arabs. The Arabs believe this land belongs to them. We say it is ours. And if it is ours, we have the full right to build whatever we wish. Prime uh, Minister, let me ask you about uh, how it went during your talks with President Bush. I have had people tell me, I have no idea if it's true, that you really don't trust the Bush administration. You think that they're out to make, uh, uh, create a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital, and that, that you just are not sure that the United States can be an honest broker. Is well, that true you know, the, the, first of all, our meeting, my meeting with the President Bush was very friendly. And it's true, I told President Bush that the Arabs say that the American position now is different than it was a few years before. And they say, the Arabs say, that President Bush is inclined, agrees to the establishment of a Palestinian state, that uh, he agrees that a part of Jerusalem has to belong to the Arabs, etc., etc. And the president told me it's not true. If they think so, they will have a deep frustration. It's the Arabs' perception now, after this uh, euphoria in the last, uh, the last months, that America is with them. Do you think America needs to do something, the Bush administration needs to do something now to change that perception? They have to explain their positions, that's all. For me, it's clear. The United States, the United States have been the initiators of these uh, peace negotiations. They have organized it. Without the United States, there couldn't be any conference in Madrid. And uh, I think the United States administration believes that they have to be honest brokers in this uh, process of negotiations. Looking back on the uh, Persian Gulf War, do you have any second thoughts about it? Or are you satisfied with how it came out? Do you think the United States should have pressed it until uh, Saddam Hussein was toppled? You know, we are concerned. We are worried. We are worried because Saddam Hussein is still in power. And I think we are not the only ones to have these worries. And we are asking ourselves and our American friends how it is possible. And what will happen in the future? I think there are some answers on these questions, but uh, uh, we are not among the decision makers. Prime Minister, when, when can uh, America, when can the world expect an answer as to whether Israel is going to attend this next round and whether or not you're going to attend in Washington? Is this well, something that will be decided in the next day or so? Yes, or? of course. I told the president that I will have to consult my ministers and my government and we will give uh, our answer. Uh, I have some proposals, and uh, I think we know how to do it. And uh, anyhow, there is no doubt that we have to be consulted, because <laughs> we are uh, one of the parties uh, involved, and I think uh, the most important party because we have to negotiate with all the Arab uh, countries. But do you think, uh, uh, is Israel going to take part in the next part, uh, part of this uh, peace negotiation? Is it just a matter of working out detail? Do you have every hope of taking part? Sure, it's not a matter of principle. And you know, we are interested in this process. This process is based to a large extent on our proposals on our principles, and we want to go along with it. 
The matter now is uh, about some details, important details, but they could be worked out. So, so you're leaving America uh, feeling that this process is still on track. Perhaps it's been slowed down, but it has not collapsed. It has sure, not come to an sure, end. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt. Uh, nobody could imagine that because of such a detail, this uh, process uh, will collapse. Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir. Jim Hoagland and I will be back in a minute with former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. And joining us uh, this morning from Kent, Connecticut, Dr. Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State. Dr. Kissinger, uh, welcome. Well, give us, Dr. Here. Kissinger, what we used to call uh, instant analysis. You heard uh, the Prime Minister. How do you think uh, this whole process of these Middle East peace talks is going at this point? You know, I belong to a minority that believes it is actually going quite well. Uh, my impression is that the body language of the Palestinians and to some extent of the Israelis suggests that some deal on the West Bank is possible. Not a final agreement, but something along the lines of the autonomy agreement or autonomy proposal that was made many years ago as part of the Egyptian-Israeli agreement. And I believe that this would permit the uh, development of a Palestinian leadership group uh, greater dignity for the peoples on the West Bank, after which uh, one can discuss the issues uh, of a final settlement. With Syria, I think it is more complicated. With Syria, one, uh, I think it will depend in part how the Palestinian negotiations go. But even there, I think some limited agreement is possible. Dr. Kissinger, uh, there's also the question of the relations between Jerusalem and Washington involved in all of this. You heard Prime Minister Shamir say that he and the President had not discussed the question of uh, guarantees for Soviet immigration. How do you interpret that omission in those talks? Well, I, I find it strange that, as uh, Prime Minister Shamir said, that all of the time was spent on the procedural question of where the meeting should take place, which I think is, an, is a question of absolutely tertiary importance, which I don't even know why it ever came up. Uh, and. Uh, I, I believe it is important for Israel and the United States to have serious, substantive discussions about the nature of the process. Otherwise, uh, Israel may find itself isolated and lose all its bargaining position. The United States may be forced into a position where it looks as if it either imposes a peace or demonstrates its impotence, neither of which we should want. And I can't think of anything more important than a substantive dialogue between Israel and the United States and to get off this nitpicking procedural uh, nonsense. Well, I think the Prime Minister may have been referring to some of the same concerns uh, when he said that he had told President Bush that the Arab world has the impression that something has changed in the last few years in the American policy toward the Middle East. Do you believe that's the case? Uh, on the whole, I believe that the uh, diplomacy that's been carried out by the uh, State Department and by the White House has been very effective. I think there has been an intangible change, an impression of greater coolness than has been the case uh, before. Uh, and part of this has to do with the role of being a mediator, where one uh, attempts to be acceptable to both sides. But part of it has been due to the fact that there has been an excessive concern with procedure and uh, not enough uh, dialogue as to substance. And I think both sides have a certain responsibility for that. Well, uh, Dr. Kissinger, was this perhaps just uh, uh, the, the comment of, of, of an artful negotiator? Uh, Mr. Shamir was very careful to say that, uh, that he told the president that the Arabs say. He did not say that I think. He said the Arabs say. Uh, was he simply trying in that way to put pressure on the president, do you suppose, uh, to come more to Israel's uh, way? The problem of the administration, as of any administration, uh, is this. If we separate too much from Israel, we give the radical Arabs the maximum of what they ask for before negotiations ever begin. If we associate too intimately uh, with Israel, we remove the incentive for concessions. And any administration has to walk a narrow path uh, on, uh, on that issue 
And of course, Prime Minister Shamir is an artful negotiator. And in fairness, one has to point out, Israel is in a very difficult position. The territory is very small. The uh, animosity of its neighbors is uh, very great. And outside forces have met uh, always centuries of hostility in the Muslim world, as we are seeing in Lebanon today. One would not expect, of course, at this stage for, for Mr. Shamir to announce what he's willing to give up. But do you think, realistically, it is possible to get any kind of an agreement on this without giving up some territory? No, I don't think it's possible. Dr. Kissinger, you spoke of a coolness between Washington and Jerusalem on this. Uh, you heard the Prime Minister say that he believes that 100 percent of the American Jewish community, rank and file, support his views on settlements and other issues. Do you think that's accurate? Well, I, uh, it, it would be very difficult for me to make a judgment of the Jewish community as a group. Uh, among my Jewish friends, opinions are divided. Some are extremely hardline. Uh, some are much more conciliatory. I certainly don't believe there is 100% support on the issue of land versus peace. There would, however, be close to 100% support on the fundamental issue of, Isra of Israel's security, however that is interpreted. You heard, him, <clears throat> you heard the Prime Minister not answer the question of whether he might be prepared to suspend settlements uh, in order to get the Soviet loan guarantees. Uh, what do you think uh, his position should be on that? Should he suspend settlements under any circumstances? Well, I believe, he, I, I believe the issue of the suspension of settlements ought to be linked to the settlement of the whole West Bank Autonomy, uh, autonomy problem. It, even if he were willing to suspend settlements, it is difficult for him to do that vis-a-vis -vis the United States. Uh, he would be better off if he did it as part of a settlement with the Palestinians. And in that context, I think that should be one of the issues that he should be prepared to offer. Dr. Kessinger, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in. Jim Hoagland of the Washington Post, thank you. We'll be back with a final word in just a minute. Well, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll be back in Washington. Thanks for joining us on Face the Nation.